When the government told them to stop selling their miracle cure, they formed a church so they could play by their own rules. Their followers called them healers, but were they just peddling snake oil? This is the story of the Grennan family, the church leaders who said it's okay to feed bleach to kids. Hi friends, I'm Katie, and this is Katie Does Crime. Thank you for joining me for the first time if you're new here, and hello to the usual rapscallions and reprobates. Please consider subscribing or joining me on Patreon if you'd like to hear more true crime stories. I don't know if you remember, but there was this pretty scary thing called COVID-19 a couple of years ago. I'm sort of kidding, it's obviously still a thing and I don't mean to make light of it, but the majority of people getting it now say it's mostly like having a cold. Experts are saying it's just something we'll live with now and people can get a shot once a year to keep it at bay, like the flu. But there was a time when a lot of people were dying from COVID. People were washing their groceries because we didn't know how it spread. Choosing to wear a mask or not became a huge political issue. And hospitals were overflowing with the dead. People were calling me here in NYC asking if the streets were on fire and the end of the world had really come like the news was reporting. And when there's panic and when there's fear, there are quacks and charlatans waiting to step in and take advantage of people. Today's case is about a church accused of doing just that, the Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing. According to their LinkedIn, Genesis 2 was founded in 2010 to bring simple and largely overlooked healing methodologies and a self-responsible approach to wellness to the world. Basically, we should have the right as individuals to decide how to treat our illnesses. But of course, what they actually meant was, we needed a way to skirt FDA approval for the supplement we want to hawk. See, Genesis had a little product they like to call Miracle Mineral Solution, or MMS. They'd been selling it for years as a cure-all for all sorts of things before COVID came along. Cancer, autism, diabetes, HIV, Alzheimer's, MMS could fight it all. The United States Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, hadn't approved MMS for any kind of medical use, so to be able to sell it as a cure-all, the creators made themselves a shield in the form of a church. The website called it a non-religious church. The whole point of it was to be able to sell this miracle mineral solution, which they labeled as sacramental cleansing water, and sell it they did, tens of thousands of bottles of it. But when COVID started killing people, it opened up a whole new market to the founders of Genesis. Their website contained testimonials and stories of people who had been cured, like these 14 people in Europe, or this 85-year-old man and his whole family. They had a weekly podcast where they could promote their church and its sacrament. There were instructions for giving it to children, and the claim that MMS had positive results at least 95% of the time. In keeping with the church theme, the founders of Genesis called themselves archbishops, and the leaders under them were called bishops. They asked their followers to make a donation to receive an official sacrament of MMS. It just so happened that each order had a required donation amount. This church idea didn't protect everyone. An Irish bishop was fined 4,000 euros for selling unauthorized MMS there in 2016, and four more people had done prison time for selling it in 2015. But now Genesis wasn't officially selling anything. They were just taking donations that resulted in a gift of MMS. They said they had the same protections as a priest giving a kid wine. It's just part of the religion. They charged health ministers $450 to get ordained. Now, the FDA had warned consumers against using MMS as far back as 2010, when they began receiving complaints about the solution. It was causing people nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, acute liver failure, or lethal low blood pressure from dehydration. People were being hospitalized with deadly complications, and some people were indeed dying. The FDA said that using these products was causing people to delay other actually safe and effective treatments. They wrote, the bottom line, these products are dangerous and you and your family should not use them. But Genesis said that mainstream medicine was just denying the massive amount of anecdotal evidence that the pharmaceutical industry was simply trying to keep natural healing methods out of the people's hands. Genesis wanted to empower their followers to make their own choices using their spiritual freedoms. And as for the people getting sick, they said you would know MMS was working when you throw up or get the runs. Health injuries. A couple of stomach aches is a health injury? Never heard of it. it doesn't, there is no logic in that at all. Nobody ever c considered a stomach ache a health injury. Yeah, we get, go a little too fast to get a little diarrhea, a little nausea. <gasps> they got diarrhea, a little nausea. The FDA began a crackdown on fake medical products in March 2020 that they called Operation Quack Hack. 
In April 2020, they sent a warning letter to the leaders of Genesis, Mark Grennan, Joseph Grennan, Jordan Grennan, and Jim Humble. They said they were taking urgent measures to protect consumers from COVID-related products without FDA approval and requested that Genesis stop their misleading claims. They advised that it's unlawful to advertise a product as a treatment or cure without scientific evidence and human clinical studies. They said they were adding the church's name to a published list of unauthorized firms selling COVID-19 products. Genesis had 48 hours to send proof that they had ceased sales before the FDA would take legal action. The next day, Mark posted the letter to their website, taunting the FDA. He said the FDA didn't have jurisdiction over them and that they wouldn't be ceasing anything. He told his church members to send letters to the FDA and the president. He also sent a signed letter himself to the FDA that read, We are not under your authority in regard to your agencies. We do not need your approval for MMS or for anything we do in our church. You have no authority over us, so why would we even consider your act? We can say cure, heal, and treat as a free church. Don't need you approval or authorization. There will be no corrective actions on our part. You have no authority over us. We will not stop our church sacraments. We will not comply. We don't have to cease anything in regard to our church sacraments. You cease and desist and harassing us. Obviously a very well-reasoned, well-written response. In his weekly video, Mark said that the FDA was paid off and wrote a letter to Donald Trump, the president at the time, telling him all about MMS. The U.S. government filed an injunction against them a week later for distributing a new, unapproved, misbranded drug. Genesis obviously wasn't scared, though. They posted a response video where they said, We're going to obey God rather than men. Well, what about if you go to jail? You think we're afraid of some Obama-appointed judge that broke their oath? You're no judge. We're not going to stop anything. On July 9th, the court granted a permanent injunction. Obviously, the Genesis response to this was that if anyone tried to enforce the court order, they would pick up guns and start a Waco. On a podcast, Mark said, You've got the Second Amendment, right? When Congress does immoral things, passes immoral laws, that's when you pick up guns, right? You want a Waco? Do they want a Waco? The government nonetheless moved forward, and in April 2021, the leaders of Genesis were indicted by a federal grand jury. Prosecutors said that Mark Grennan, 62, and his three sons, Jonathan, 34, Joseph, 32, and Jordan, 26, of Bradenton, Florida, violated court orders by selling more than $1 million of the Miracle Mineral Solution. Authorities raided the Grennans and found that MMS was being manufactured in a rundown shed in the backyard at Jonathan's house. Officers seized 10,000 pounds of the base chemical in dirty blue drums. The label advised users to call poison control if swallowed, a reminder that this was the same chemical the Grennans were telling people to put in their water. Officers also found those guns the Grennans promised to pick up, including a pump-action shotgun hidden in a specially designed violin case. Mark Grennan and his sons were all charged with conspiracy to commit fraud and criminal contempt. Jonathan and Jordan were already being held at the time of the indictment because a judge had ruled that they wouldn't show up to any future court dates on account of not believing the government had any jurisdiction over them. They were also considered a danger to the community. Their father, Mark, posted on the Genesis website that it's a sad day for the U.S. when a church and its bishops are arrested for helping others. But Mark and Joseph couldn't be taken in because they were in a beach town in Columbia at the time, running a quote-unquote health restoration center where believers could pay $5,000 a month to stay and get unfettered access to MMS. At the time, seven Americans had died from using it. Luckily, Columbia was willing to work with the U.S. and extradited the Grennans back to their home turf. Their only condition was that the criminal contempt charge be dropped. Mark and his three sons then appeared in a Miami court in July 2023 for a trial that lasted all of two days. They all decided to defend themselves, not that it mattered because they chose to say nothing during the trial. The prosecutors called them con men, running a scheme built on deception and dishonesty. They called MMS a snake oil scam for money. They explained that MMS was really just bleach. It was a liquid made of distilled water and 28% sodium chloride. The direction said to mix it with a citric acid like lemon or lime juice before drinking. Or Genesis sold a second solution of citric acid you could buy for your convenience that they called the activator. When the two were combined, the result was chlorine dioxide, a strong chemical used as industrial bleach. It's what they use to make paper or fabric white. It disinfects food service surfaces. We took our miracle cure to our respected testing laboratory. And the results were as expected. Nothing miraculous about it. 
essentially a kind of chlorine. MMS is an industrial chemical. It's an industrial bleach. Dr. Paul Wong is the senior vice president of Autism Speaks. The fact that anybody would suggest that you should give this to somebody is ridiculous. This is scary, dangerous stuff. In fact, look what happened when we poured some of it, undiluted, onto a pair of jeans. The denim turned white through both pant legs. And Dr. Wong says, even at the prescribed much smaller dose, it's still a danger. And that's what it's doing in the gut of the kids who are given this. There's nothing good that MMS is doing. And yes, I also want to be clear that it is sometimes used to treat drinking water. However, the highest permitted amount is 0.8 milligrams per liter, while Genesis was telling people to use 27 drops a day just for a baby. A toxicologist at King's College in London said, it is designed to kill bacteria, pathogens, germs. It will do that to human tissue. An FDA agent had gone undercover to buy bottles of MMS for 15, 20, and $30. And he wrote to the Grennan saying that his made up wife still had her cancer after using their treatment. They emailed back saying that she just needed to use it for longer. The judge in the case said that the First Amendment protections for religious freedom didn't apply at the trial and that the jury couldn't consider their church as a defense because it wasn't a religious entity. Basically, Genesis ruined its own case by calling itself a non-religious church on its website. It turns out you can't simply create a fake church to break whatever laws you want to. It took all of 30 minutes for the federal grand jury to convict them. All four Grennans were found guilty of conspiring to defraud the U.S. government and FDA. Jonathan and Jordan, the ones who didn't get the deal thanks to the Colombian government, were also found guilty of violating court orders. Three months later, in October of this year, they were sentenced. At the sentencing hearing, Mark called himself the real victim here and said that he should be compensated for the almost 1,200 days he spent in custody. He requested $5.76 million for being held unlawfully. When he asked the judge, yes or no, the judge said, that's a nonsensical question, I won't answer that. Mark and Joseph, now 66 and 36 years old, got 60 months in prison, the maximum for distributing unapproved drugs. Mark was fined $5,000, and both were ordered to pay $1,948 in restitution to their victims. Jonathan, 37, and Jordan, 29, got 151 months because of their additional contempt of court charges. They'll also have three years of supervised release and were ordered to pay $2,500 each in restitution. So that's five years and 12 and a half years for selling bleach as a miracle cure. All four men are being held at the Federal Detention Center in Miami. In his last act as a free man, Mark posted to his Facebook page to hawk his book. The first comment on the post says, bruh, shut the hell up. Today, the Genesis church domain is for sale. The discussion around Genesis and MMS is a little hard to read because it's extremely politically charged. You have some people claiming that there's this conspiracy in this country to keep us sick and the Grennans were just trying to save us. You have other people claiming that only anti-masker, anti-vaxxers would be dumb enough to fall for this sort of thing. The people on the one side are saying things like, 18 tumors came out of their right nostril thanks to Mark. That's a real comment I read. While the people on the other side are calling him a snake oil salesman who thought he found a get out of jail free card by faking a church. Whatever side they're on, it's honestly just weird to me when people are so convinced that they know the truth. I'll say that I come from a place of skepticism and needing facts before I'll believe anything, so I can't imagine hearing some random guy on the internet talk about some random chemical and wanting to try it myself. On the other hand, I really feel for people who feel that they have nowhere else to turn. When you're staring down death's door with cancer or want to help your child with autism or any of the other things MMS claimed to cure, I can see how you might be willing to try something you otherwise wouldn't. A member of my family went to Mexico for an experimental cancer treatment that wasn't approved in the U.S., and I didn't for a second judge them, not when it felt like it was the only option left. I guess the thing is that I'm not sure I believe this family had the best of intentions. I'm not sure I believe this church was really founded to help people. I'm not sure someone who's authentic would ever claim to be able to cure 95% of diseases, especially not at $5,000 a month in a restoration center in Colombia when you can just buy some sodium chloride on Amazon for $12 a pound. When 2020 did an expose on Genesis back in 2016, a wave of emails flooded the ABC News inbox. Over 500 people wanted to share their experience with the Miracle Mineral Solution, and many believers accused ABC of being in the pockets of Big Pharma. People said it cured their cancer and that they gave it to their sick dogs. But just days after 2020 tracked down the man who co-founded Genesis with Mark, he posted a note to the church's website that read, There are certainly times I have said some things that I probably should have said differently, for lack of a better way to express things at the time, or because others put words in my mouth, 
In the past, I have stated that MMS cures most of all diseases. Today, I say that MMS cures nothing. He still maintains, however, that it's an important health tool that does help combat the things that make us sick. You won't be surprised to learn that this man was a former Scientologist who also claimed that he traveled through space and was a billion-year-old god. He died in September of this year at the age of 90. Yes, the announcement on his website said 90 years and not a billion. So what do you think? Was this a bogus miracle cure intended to target vulnerable people during a pandemic, or were the Grenons just trying to help people? As always, please let me know what you think about this case in the comments. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm just a true crime fan like you are, and I really appreciate you taking a chance on me. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like spending this time together. I would be so appreciative. Until next time, I'm Katie, and this has been Katie Does Crime.